Hello, I'm Mr. Fu here. I'm doing the analysis of GCO level physics from 2011 to 2021, the Singapore paper. Now, um, this is a spreadsheet I did to analyze the trend of the questions asked over the past 11 years from 2011 to last year, 2021. And I classify the topics according to the average percentage of the questions appear over the past 11 years and the number of times the question appear at least 8%. Now, for paper one, which is the MCQ, the topics which appear 8% or more beyond three years are as follow. The most popular topic is current of electricity and DC circuit. I classify these two topics together because the questions are often interlinked or integrated. So over the past 11 years, the average percentage it appear in paper one is a high 12%. This is quite significant. And every year without fail, the questions appear at least 8% of the entire paper. The second imposition is surprisingly physical quantities, units and measurements. This topic is not a popular topic tested in paper two. So it is heavily tested in paper one. A total of 7% on average with seven years of more with 8% or more appear. So candidates should pay attention to this topic where they will be tested on the units conversion and questions such as diameter of the earth, diameter of an atom, even the diameter of a human hair was tested in previous years. Next, energy work power, which has an average percentage of 6%, appeared at least six times over the past 11 years with 8% of more. This is a very important topic also. Do pay attention to the concept of work done, how to you apply the equations of kinetic energy, GPE, gravitation potential energy to the question and um, understand how to apply the concept of power equals to rate of work done in your question. There are also questions related to the conversion of energy. So do be familiar with the different examples tested throughout the years, as well as other school paper. Next, electromagnetic induction with an average of 7%. The number of years with 8% or more is five years. So this is quite an important topic because there are quite a number of concepts tested in this topic like transformer, CRO, and electromagnetic induction, Lenz law. So with a number of concepts tested, it is very important to pay attention to this topic to make sure that you have grasped the correct concepts and understood the concepts well. Next are light, kinematics and wave, which are important topics to take note of and to study intensively because they will appear every year without fail. Just that um, in terms of 8% or more, these three topics may not be as much as the other topics mentioned. However, we should not neglect studying these important topics. Other important topics are thermal properties of metal, dynamics, pressure, kinetic model of metal, and so on shown on the slide. Amongst them, do pay attention to thermal properties of metal because there are quite a number of concepts that will be tested in this topic, like the heating and cooling curve, uh, concepts about specific heat capacity, latent heat of vaporization and fusion, um, the calculations 
may be tested in the MCQ. Dynamics and pressure are also important uh, with an emphasis on, for example, terminal velocity, where we compare the air resistance against the weight when an object falls under gravity. Pressure could be testing you on the concept of pressure of solid material or pressure of liquid barometer, manometer. Okay, do pay attention to them and spend time studying them to revise them as they can be popular questions in the paper one. Of course, do spend time revising concepts of kinetic model or metal. Pay attention to Brownian motion and the relationship between pressure, temperature, and volume of gas. Mass, weight, and density, sound, turning effects of forces, and static electricity are other popular topics that should be studied intensively as well, as there are popular questions likely to come out for the paper in this year. Other topics that may have much less weightage but still cannot be ignored, they do appear sometimes, uh, but based on past year trend, these topics sometimes don't appear, uh, but we never know exactly what will come out. So we will spend less time because this topic in particular have lesser learning objective. So topics with less lesser objective will have, a, will have less uh, question tested. The learning objective are always in proportion to the number of questions that could be tested. Although it may not be true all the time, most of the time it's true. So uh, topics like transfer of thermal energy, temperature, EM wave, practical electricity, magnetism, and electromagnetism may carry lesser weightage based on past year trends. Uh, still, we cannot ignore these topics. Looking at paper two, uh, this is the spreadsheet that I use to compute the average percentage and the number of times the topic appeared 8% or more over the past 11 years. So as expected, current of electricity and DC circuit have a high average of 15%. So this topic is in very, very important, a very significant topic that candidates should not ignore. With every year with a high percentage of 8% or more, we outfill. Um, light has appeared at least eight times with 8% or more with an average percentage of 9%. Um, there are quite a number of concepts under the topic of light. Reflection, refraction, critical angle, total internal reflection, and lenses. So it's very important to spend time studying this topic. Um, it is a very significant topic that cannot be ignored. Thermal properties of metal uh, seems to be a very popular topic based on past year trend. So do spend time revising on this as well as energy work and power, practical electricity, electromagnetic induction and dynamics. So these are important topics that you should prioritize because there are many learning objectives covered under them and they have proven to be very popular questions with a high percentage in the past year questions. Okay, and for physics, it's important to see integrated or interlinked concepts. Like for example, in some of the past year questions, uh, the examiner actually uh, relate energy work power to electricity. Or we can also relate thermal properties of metal to practical electricity. For example, power equals to voltage times current. Okay, so given the power, we can calculate the energy needed to heat a particular substance by multiplying power by time, time to get the energy. And then the energy is used to heat up the substance. And you can find out the temperature rise using energy equals to mass times specific heat capacity times change in temperature. So try to find interlinked or integrated concepts because 
it may be a possible exam question. Other important topics are wave, kinematics, sound, turning effects of forces as shown on the slide, and more. Do prioritize, but also do not ignore the topics with lesser weightage. Uh, they still carry certain amount of marks. The, the number of marks allocated is related to the learning objective covered under each topic. All right, like EM wave, for example, is not a very big topic. You only need to remember the order of the EM wave based on the wavelength and frequency. And most importantly, the users and the properties of EM wave. So the learning objectives are not as um, intense as other topics. Okay, so, but do bear in mind that there are certain questions allocated for factual knowledge. So EM wave can be tested. And also try to see interlink between topics. For example, EM wave and wave. So they may ask you to calculate the frequency of a particular wave given the wavelength. And the speed of wave or speed of EM wave should be known by the candidate. Should be known by the candidate because we all know that EM wave carry a speed of 3 times 10 to the power 8 meter per second, right? And also relate to sound. So related topics like wave, sound, EM wave can be studied together as an uh, interlinked concept. Okay? Less weightage, but I won't say not important. Over the past 11 years, their percentage of appearing is low. Sometimes they don't even appear in paper too like kinetic model of metal, transfer of thermal energy, and temperature. For paper three practical, over the past uh, years, electric circuit appear every year without fail. Okay, it is a very popular practical exam question. Last year, it was integrated with thermal properties of metal relating to heat capacity. So do pay attention to this. It seems to get more and more prominent. Light came out also, so uh, do pay attention to that. Light was the question last year, and I predict likelihood to appear will be mechanics question for practical, since um, it does not come out a lot last year or never came out at all during the practical, but it came out in previous years. So uh, try to practice the related mechanics question like uh, Hooke's law, the spring, turning effect of forces, dynamics, kinematics, physical quantities, and units. I'm sure your teacher will be preparing you for this and uh, go through with you and highlight to you the important points for each type of practical, as well as uh, get yourself prepared for experiment planning. For physics, normally the planning question is related to the practical you did. For example, uh, you may be asked in your practical to determine resistance of a particular wire. And then the planning question is related to the resistance of wire. For example, uh, how will um, having maybe varying the, how do you vary the resistor in other ways, something like that. So um, you can try looking at some of the questions given by your school or I can actually share later on some of the sample questions from different schools and past year O-level questions, how they may look like. And it's good that you get yourself prepared, try to practice uh, some of the important things like drawing gradient, determining y-intercept and determining equation uh, that is likely to come out. And um, uh, practicing on how to answer source of error question. For example, for this particular experiment involving electricity, involving resistance of wire, what could be a significant source of error that lead to inaccuracy, inaccurate results? For example, the, the, the wire that you are measuring may not be of uniform thickness. Okay, so if the thickness is not uniform, that will affect resistance. So R equals to resistivity times length divided by cross-sectional area. So with different thickness along the whole length of the electric wire, the, the cross-sectional area will be different and not consistent. That will affect the resistance. So if the cross-sectional area is larger than uh, the average, 
okay, when the resistance will be lower. But if the cross section area is smaller than average, resistance will be higher. And when resistance changes along the length of the wire, it will affect the current and the voltage reading. Okay, how will it affect? Then you have to deduce it. And how do you minimize the error, etc.? Do bear in mind, you may not just be expected to know how to write source of error or identify source of error, but how do you overcome the problem or how do you eliminate or reduce the error causing the inaccurate results, all right? Do know what is random error and systematic error and how to reduce random error and how to eliminate systematic error. Um, do take note that the basic skills like graph plotting, table tabulation, significant figure units, uh, source of error, and some of the thinking questions related to the procedural handling of the experiment, okay, will be tested. But the experiment will be of different nature. Uh, from. So do get yourself exposed to as many as you can. Uh, if you are not familiar with setting up circuit, please make sure that you really, really get it. Okay, there's a very high chance it will be tested again on electricity. The other one could be light, but likelihood to be mechanics. Okay, very lightly. Okay, and then that's it. So I hope you benefit from my session. It will help you to prepare better for your O-level this year. Wish you good luck and do have enough rest before the practical exam. Do have enough rest also before every assessment so that you'll be alert and be able to read the question carefully. Underline keywords if needed because the, 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 the question normally will give out hints or clues which will help you to answer the question. We will need to pay attention to the question term. What are the information given and how do you relate the information to answering the question? We need to ask ourselves, what is the question asking and answer accordingly? Because you may end up getting zero mark because you never answer the question at all. Okay, if there is time, I may go into answering technique. Okay, how do you answer all level questions successfully and score the maximum mark? Okay, so that's about it. Thank you very much. I hope it will benefit you. Bye-bye.